What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLP and FINRA saga. And in today's video guys, I will show you some very interesting news. First of all, I will show you that potential wrongdoers don't even try to hide uh, the information that uh, they are wrongdoers and uh, they pretty much admit this information uh, by their actions. Then I will show you an update uh, in regards uh, to the petition that was filed just uh, recently by Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. And what is more importantly, I will show you an update in regards to the Steamroller petition that was filed back in uh, November, I guess, of last year in regards to the disclosure of some sensitive information. Then I will show you that wrongdoers uh, became more active and uh, I will show you that potentially they are again trying to hide some sensitive information. And at the end of this video, I will show you how we can fight them and how we are winning this battle against them. So, and before we dive deep into all of this, guys, please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. It is the easiest way how we can push this case forward to the broader audience and eventually it will help us to win this battle. So, let's start with the first news. Uh, we are on official uh, Twitter account of Junk Savvy and she wrote this uh, tweet just a couple of hours ago in uh, response to the tweet that was published by Kristen Shaughnessy uh, the, and she published it uh, 8 hours ago. Kristen Shaughnessy wrote, TD Bank uh, expecting uh, up to $450 million in fines uh, for alleged anti-money laundering violations. TD Bank uh, said it would set aside $450 million for fines it is likely to face from US regulators because of weaknesses uh, with its anti-money laundering practices. And guys, it is quite interesting fact, let me show you what did uh, Junk Savvy write. TD Bank sets aside $450 million for possible US anti-money laundering penalties. Nothing says guilty more than setting aside the money for fines that have not even been assigned yet. Is this their version uh, of a bribe? We are prepared to pay to stay out of jail. Hey, uh, TD Bank uh, United States, have you set aside the money you need to cover the counterfeit shares you sold to MMGLP investors? Asking for a friend, thinking you might need a uh, scosh more than $450 million. Our RICO counterfeiting, securities fraud, tax evasion, conspiracy to defraud and uh, wire fraud still crimes in the United States. And guys, this fact that the bank uh, is preparing for the fines uh, is quite ridiculous. Because why in the world uh, they perform this uh, illegal activity and they let this illegal activity to happen in their bank instead of uh, preventing it? It doesn't make sense. But at the same time, it makes a lot of sense in terms of uh, the possibilities of uh, the US uh, market. And you know that uh, one of the major short sellers uh, of uh, these stocks uh, that have uh, a lot of uh, shares uh, on their balance sheet that uh, was sold but not yet purchased are the United States uh, major banks. And guys, this is another evidence uh, how uh, miserable this system is, unfortunately, but it is the reality. And that is why, guys, the entire system should be changed. And we, as an MMTLP community, have all the chances uh, to win this battle and to solve the major problem for the entire US stock market. So, let me show you another quite interesting update in regards to the petitions that was uh, that were filed uh, recently and back in the days uh, in uh, October of uh, 2023, uh, if I remember it correct. So, Mark Basile responded uh, to the same tweet uh, that was uh, published just recently in regards to the petition that was filed uh, by Next Bridge Hydrocarbons uh, against Trade Station Securities. And let me show you this information. He wrote this tweet uh, in response to the tweet that was published by Susie Surfer. And Susie asked, uh, I agree, but I do think they will get further than you did uh, on your petition, Mark. And uh, Mark responded, well, the Horasani case uh, against FINRA was uh, tough because they screamed immunity and without a court case uh, to get actual discovery, it was hard to articulate a legal claim. Although I believe the petition or petitions did. 
The Steam Roller petition is still pending and we are waiting now for that decision. Texas has a slightly different and more lenient standard than uh, to the courts in New York on the repetition proceeding. So, I'm hoping this information is provided. If not, we will see in three weeks uh, where we stand. And guys, three weeks is another disclosure from Mark and I will continue with this a bit later. So, what uh, does this steamroller petition mean? Uh, you know that uh, Mark Basile and his company, uh, his law firm, filed two petitions. One was denied, uh, I guess, uh, in January or uh, at the very beginning of February. And the second one, this steamroller petition, is still uh, in the play. And I couldn't find uh, any information from Mark Basile in regards to this petition. He basically kept silence uh, for quite a long period of time. But for now, he said that uh, this petition is pending. Let me show you the uh, main idea of this petition. Junk Savvy wrote this uh, back in November of 2023, at the very beginning of November, as you can see, November the 8th. And she wrote, Breaking news, Joseph F. Rose, uh, Esquire of the Basel Law Firm, uh, files petition in New York uh, State Supreme Court on behalf of MMTLP Investor Group, Steamroller LLC. Petition against OTC markets, uh, six names of market maker and broker dealer who listed MMTLP for trading in October of 2021. And guys, this petition is very important because we know that uh, back in October of 2021, MMTLP became trend tradable without even uh, permission from MMAT itself. And uh, this means uh, first two market makers and broker dealers who made the first ever trade uh, for MMTLP ticker symbol was a part of a huge enterprise uh, of the wrongdoers who started uh, to perform this illegal activity in regards to MMAT and MMTLP uh, shares. And uh, definitely, this uh, petition is extremely important, not only because of uh, its nature, but because uh, of uh, the respondent on this petition. It was filed against the OTC markets. And we know other petitions uh, were dismissed because of the total immunity of the respondents. And OTC markets doesn't have uh, this uh, immunity. That is why they either have uh, to respond to this petition and give all the names of uh, the wrongdoers who made uh, the MMTLP uh, ticker symbol tradable back in October of 2021. Or the second option for them is uh, to say why they shouldn't do this and uh, the judge should uh, uh, make a decision in order to uh, let them uh, to disclose or let them uh, to uh, keep uh, this information uh, for themselves. On top of that, guys, if you want to stay in line with the latest updates of uh, this petition, you can uh, visit uh, uh, this website. It is New York State Unified Court System. And here is uh, the petition itself. Here is uh, its number, 160854-2023 in New York Supreme Court. And as you can see, uh, the case status is active. And uh, we don't know when uh, the decision will be made uh, and uh, what uh, this decision will be, basically. But we have to wait and we have uh, to keep an eye on this uh, petition as well. Because, guys, petitions, don't be confused, petitions are not the similar actions that uh, the lawsuits. Because a lawsuit is a very lengthy, long process uh, where everything happens in court. And first of all, it happens uh, in uh, the official documents uh, that uh, counterparties should write uh, to uh, stay in line with the uh, court rules. And because of uh, this uh, quite uh, long procedure, uh, the results uh, from the lawsuits uh, might take years. But the petition is completely different procedure. It is uh, the preliminary procedure that uh, happens before the actual lawsuit. And uh, the results of this petition should uh, be the base of uh, the lawsuit itself. And definitely, if and when uh, we will know the uh, names of the wrongdoers uh, who started to trade MMTLP shares, definitely it will be filed another lawsuit against them because they performed an illegal activity. And guys... For now, you can see that we achieved a lot. Uh, we found out uh, a lot of information. And that is why the wrongdoers are trying to hide some sensitive information or they are trying to hide uh, some uh, information that uh, might be harmful for them. 
And let me show you this tweet. Uh, it was published uh, by Odysseus just yesterday, and John Burda reposted it. And Odysseus wrote, replying to uh, Rare DD, CFTC, and uh, the SEC. MMTLP, now interesting that uh, BOD has been removed uh, from MII website, and not MII, but MMI website. I'm surely not the only one that archived this uh, fine distinguished image of uh, Mr. James Angel. Please uh, comment if your status has changed, sir. And he added two links. Uh, one link uh, is leading us uh, to the Modern Markets Initiative website, and the second one is uh, to Wayback uh, Machine. Let me first of all show you the uh, Wayback Machine. As you can see, uh, we are on mo Modern Markets uh, Initiative.org slash leadership uh, link. And here you can see that James J. Angel uh, was mentioned right here. And the modern markets initiatives uh, are potentially one of uh, the wrongdoers. And as you can see, this screenshot was made on May 22nd of 2022. And for now, if you take a look on their official website, you will not find this information at all. If you try to use the same link, uh, uh, market, modernmarketsinitiative.org slash leadership, you will have uh, this arrow. And guys, on the one hand, uh, it might be suspicious, but on the other hand, all other people were deleted as well. And uh, it is, uh, in my opinion, it is uh, too preliminary to uh, uh, make uh, this uh, conclusion, but definitely something might happen behind the scenes. On top of that, guys, because of our achievements, a lot of wrongdoers uh, became uh, extremely active and uh, first of all, I want to pay attention to the Rare DD's official Twitter account. Uh, he wrote this just two hours ago. Even with the incorrect uh, December 13th share cancellation date, E-Trade attempted to allow position close only trading in MMTLP after December the 8th of 2022. And he added uh, this uh, uh, tiny video for 25 seconds long. Uh, and uh, this video refers to his uh, main video where he explains uh, how FINRA tried to hide this information. On top of that, uh, and I already showed you this uh, information, uh, he wrote this. Also, here's a trade telling us uh, what they would do uh, well before they attempted to do so. And let me show you this uh, screenshot. As you can see, on December the 3rd, uh, e trade wrote in response to the question. And the question uh, is following. What will be the status of investors who currently hold a short position on MMTLP? And the answer is following. Most likely, as it gets uh, closer to the day of action, uh, there will not uh, be shares to borrow. There is a regulation SHO rule that allows us to buy in if there are not shares to borrow for shorts. We also will not allow shorting on most OTC securities. And this means uh, the short position should be closed uh, back uh, in the beginning of December probably on the last trading session of uh, MMTLP, but definitely because of the U3 halt, nothing happened. And we know that short position is still there. According to FINRA itself, uh, uh, the short position on MMTLP is at least 2.65 million shares. And we know that this number is much, much bigger because in the official letter of NetBridge Hydrocarbons, they stated that uh, th at least one short seller contacted to NBH and asked them to uh, issue at least 10 times more uh, shares in order to cover their short position. And this is another evidence of illegal activity that is directly related to our case. On top of that, guys, let me show you that uh, if you take a look right here, you can see that uh, Trader Zero on April 29 wrote several tweets uh, and he became uh, a person who tries uh, to push our case down. But definitely, uh, his uh, so-called facts was destroyed by Rare DD and was destroyed uh, by Drew Diligence. Let me show you that uh, Trader Zero on April 29th also stated, uh, they didn't break Rule 6419. Not a single broker said they were going to force close short positions. Uh, you have no evidence at all that backs up uh, those claims. None. What you have is people manipulating language to justify why they lost money on a trade. And guys, this uh, statement uh, is completely irrelevant because just uh, a couple of minutes ago I showed you uh, this letter from E-Trade itself uh, where they stated that uh, short positions should be closed. On top of that, uh, guys, let me show you this uh, response that was uh, made uh, by Drew Diligence. 
and Drew Diligence wrote it four hours ago and uh, he added uh, this screenshot from uh, Trade Zero America. Uh, not a single broker said they were going to force uh, close. BS, you think uh, you know everything and you may know a lot about market mechanics. But in the process of displaying your arrogance, you also display that you don't uh, know anything about MMTLP. So please just be quiet. Thanks. And here is uh, the screenshot. Let me go to this. Trade zero clients. Symbol MMTLP, MetaMaterials Prefer Share, will undergo share spin off with the X date listed as Monday, December 12, 2022. Due to the circumstances and uncertain component of this corporate action, all options, positions, and short equity positions must be liquidated by 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday, December 9, 2022. If you fail to liquidate your position, Trade Zero's risk department will automatically liquidate your position. If you have any questions, please contact uh, us at support at tradezero.us or this uh, telephone number. And guys, as you can see, the deadline was December the 9th, but we know that uh, the U3 halt was implemented on December the 8th. This means Trade Zero also has a share imbalance and they have an active short position on MMTLP shares. And guys, it is another violation. So, you can see that uh, the wrongdoers became much more active. And let me show you that uh, uh, we also had one wrongdoer who tried to push our case down. But uh, he didn't uh, write any uh, new tweet uh, in regards to MMTLP after April the 5th. And you know that uh, his name is Charles Gasparina and he was extremely active uh, just a month ago. But for now he is uh, extremely silent in regards to our case. And guys, guess what happened to him? One of the community members filed a class action lawsuit in regards to his activity. And that is why he keeps silence. So, we know how to behave uh, in these situations and that is why, guys, we are on the right path to solve this problem. And guys, let me tell you my personal story. I have a wife and two children aged 11 and uh, 15, as well as a small dog. After 30 years of living in Russia near the Baikal Lake, we decided to move. Now we reside in Serbia. Although I don't own any MMTLP shares, I invest a lot of time creating daily MMTLP videos. I have been doing this every day without days off and holidays for more than one and a half years. Now I wish to buy back this time from my family, from my children. We've agreed that I will ask the MHLP community to support me and I will give all the money to the children. Therefore, if you believe that I am providing useful content for you and uh, wish to support me, you can join my Patreon account. For $5 a month, I will add your name to my list of supporters if you wish. Thank you in advance. The link you can find in the description below. So, I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm bad. I